How's your hair? It's feeling good. It's, it's, looking, good. it's looking good. Yeah. Shoulder's feeling a little better from broken shoulder. All right. Sorry we're a hair late, but you know, we're still learning this thing, so. Or you thought it was at 6.30. Well, I did think it was at 6.30 <laughs> or 6 o'clock. <laughs> it was supposed to be at 6. All right, so let's get going. Okay, right. so we're trying a new method, just so you guys know. I think we talked a little bit about it with Facebook group. We're trying to do 30 minutes so that it's quick and short and everybody can get back to their families. Easier to watch, too. Yeah, so um, like we discussed, we're only going to take 20 questions, okay. and then we're going to be done. Um, and then we'll do another one next week, most likely, for the next set of questions. So... First one, here we go. We're going to just jump right in. All right. Devin Lee wants to know, did family tree recently do another migration? My husband has broken pieces of my tree attributed to him as the person who uploaded the date in summer of 2016, but he did no such thing. I'm finding duplicates of my close relations and I don't understand why that's the case. Any ideas? What was the problems again? Broken record? If she wants to know if Family Tree did another migration. Her mm. husband has broken pieces of her tree attributed to him as the person uploading the, the information of last summer. But he didn't do it, apparently. <laughs> Surprise! I, I have to know have no details because I, <laughs> I disagree with the fact that maybe he didn't do it. Well, maybe he's secretly helping out with your tree, Devin. Well, uh, everyone needs to know that she, they didn't. They didn't ask whether it was living or dead, but everybody Ooh. needs to know that the dead people are all the same for everybody. Okay. So if I have my line, and uh, I have an account, and my line goes this way, and my wife's line goes that way, I, I see. I can see both lines. Okay. And my wife, she has an account. She sees my line too, and her line. And if she goes up my line and gets to the dead, then we're both working on the same copies of that dead person. So. There are no private trees in Family Tree. Except for the living. Well, there's still right? only one tree. So I need to make sure this is clear. Okay, let's make so, sure it's clear. And I don't know if this is the problem, so we'll start with this and then we'll do the other stuff. If it's not this, I guess, Devin, send no, we'll, him an yeah, email. Yeah, you can send me an email. And just so you guys know, his email is ron at familysearch.org. Yeah. And he answers every email. It might not be, like, immediate, but it does happen, all right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he gets about 600 emails no, a day. 400, sorry. Yeah. Emails a day. So it does happen. It just takes a little bit of time. Okay, so, so. This, is how, this is how Family Tree works. Okay. There's the living. All right. And so this may be myself and this may be my wife. Okay. And So these would be parents. Yeah, these are parents. Okay. But Let's say, well, this is probably a bad example because this looks like that we're, looks like a whole bunch of crisscross. No, it looks like somewhere. we're cousins, and I'd be marrying my cousin. Well, that's kind of gross. That's kind of first Whoa. cousins is yucky. Little so, incest happening. Yeah. Okay. So let's say here's my wife's line, and she has her and me, and she'll have she can put in. She my, has like her. My parents. parents are dead. So me here. Okay. So I got to go like this. This is Ron's living. Mm -hmm. This is my wife's living. Okay. She has a copy of Ron here. And because you're living. And a copy of wife. Okay. And this is me. And my parents are dead. So I link to the dead copy of my parents. And her version of Ron also links to the same dead copies of the parents. Okay. So if I go up here and, and if, if I go over here and make changes, she could also go up here and make different changes. So it's possible that, you know... So husband and wife are working on the same dead people. As a matter of fact, anybody on the dead side is, we try to share. We try to have one copy of that dead person in the entire single tree. Okay. So just, to, just that's just a reminder. This may not be the problem, but this is the reminder. I, I think it's kind of interesting, but, uh, you know, the tree grows different places, right? Somebody in Korea starts a tree and mm -hmm. someone in Japan or Canada. And then as we get into dead, we start finding duplicates and we join trees together. So it's an interesting uh, point that the largest single tree, okay. meaning all connected up, has over 380 million persons in that tree. Starting from a living person, so, going yeah. all the way through all their ancestors. That's right. If, it you, has 380 the, if you look million at the line ancestors. and look at every parent, every son, child, the grand, you know, all the descendants, uh -huh. all the ascendants, starting at a dead person. 
the the largest tree is 380 million people. That's in that a whole lot of people yes, in one tree. Yes, it is. Tree. Okay, now back to the other question. So okay. Repeat me again. So, I, oh, and then did we do any migrations? Okay, so now yes. you need to understand. So did Family Tree do a, recently we do did. a migration? So on Apparently June 27, okay. 2017. Well, this doesn't happen then. 2016. Say, are you living in Back to the Future? Uh, future, <laughs> future and past are all the same. I can't figure out the difference. Okay. So on June 27, 2017. So last summer. That's when we took the old system. This is great handwriting, by the way. Is that pretty good? Yeah. That looks horrible. It looks great. Right. <laughs> that was my sarcastic great. So we have the old okay. the old system here okay. that we've been using for the last up until June. No, we had the the so those who know yes. we had NFS the new file system. So that's then, new family search. Yeah, which for, is not new. So don't think go, don't get mistake. So it's actually not new. It's actually old. Yeah. But it's dead now, so then don't we try to, to hide it. Family Tree version one, we'll call it. Okay. And Family Tree version one was some of it was running still over here in New Family Search. Okay. And we were using it, so we'd call back there and get data and present it here. But we were getting too. It, it wasn't good. It wasn't fast enough. And so on June twenty seventh, mm -hmm. we cut over to a whole new system on the back end. So it's Family Tree here, two point we'll say. Okay. And it's on a new, a whole new system. No more of this is gone. You killed new Actually, family Actually, today I did the final approval of turning off the all of these the last of these machines. Okay, so, so now we're and completely the last of these ones. on to Family Search 2.0. Right, Family Tree 2.0. Okay. And what happened was when we were building this Family Tree, we were we were this is a change log. We have a change log where we record every change on a person. Okay. Well, over time, as we were building Family Tree, we weren't storing everything as a cha in the change log because we were just creating it. Okay. So at the beginning, we only stored like name and birth and death, and then later on, we added relationships, and then later on, we added, you know, discussions, and then later on, we added stuff. Okay. And and then when we when we moved into the new system over here, it's a new database. Okay. okay. When we moved to the new database, we Copied all the data over, and then we looked back and said, okay, if we look at all the changes, we copied the change log over, uh -huh. and then we said, if we go through all the change log, and we create a person that's off that change log, does it look like the person over here? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if this is getting complicated, it I, is I getting saw, a little, it's a little, a little messy. messy. But, oh, it's okay. So Let's we go. look over here to see if it looked the same. If it didn't look the same, then we added more change log entries so it looked the same. Because that way we were guaranteed that we had all the data that was over here was over here in the new one. Gotcha. Now, when we added these entries here, mm -hmm. we they should have said family search, not her husband's name. Oh. And we shouldn't have broken anything because okay. we checked to make sure everything looked identical. So, uh, that we did do a migration on June 27, 2016. And, uh, uh, but there's, but... That's why people are saying, well, I see a lot of family search added data. And that's because we were trying to clean up the change log gotcha. to make sure it was all recorded properly so it could be restored and all that stuff. Okay. So if that doesn't answer your question, Devin, right? Devin. If that, so if that doesn't answer, that answer it, write me an email and give me some more details and we'll communicate back and forth. Yeah. He'll like we'll get send him a little out. bit more like your PID on yeah. the person that's having the problems right. and maybe like... The person that's showing up with the wrong information. Yeah, what's wrong? The PIDs and the wrong. What's so then wrong? he can go take a little bit. And I hope everybody knows what a PID is. There are some people who don't know what a PID is. I feel like is. we need to maybe make a cheat sheet and yeah. keep it in Facebook here. So a PID stands for person. Wow, this is good. ID. How about that? <laughs> Ooh, a person I'm, I'm identifier. Better. Right, and it looks. Some people call them license plates. Kind of Ooh. funny enough, I found out some other people call them license okay, plates. Okay, a license plate. Then there's stuff like, you'll see something like F5GH-ZXW or something like that. That's what, this is the PID. And every person in Family Tree has a unique PID. Okay, so it's, it's sort their, of like it's a social security number. number. It's a social security number for a person in, in the tree. tree. Yeah. Okay, so right. Devin, if that doesn't fix it, then let us know your PID, email him, and we'll talk about it more. Ron at FamilySearch.org. Right, Ron at FamilySearch.org.
And I feel like we might need to make a cheat sheet for you guys. On for Facebook? the newbies. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on that this week, guys. Okay. okay. Next question. Hopefully that helped. Petty wants to know, will Family Tree ever become more compatible with Jaws? I hope you know what uh, Jaws is yes, because I, do. I don't know what Jaws is. Yes, I do. Jaws is a reader that reads the screen okay. and speaks. Oh. So it's used by people who have difficulty seeing. Okay. And all the way from blind to just can barely see it. That's and so helpful. they run JAWS and it goes through the through when you open a browser, it goes through the browser and it reads all the words on the browser. Mm, okay. And so it's amazing. I've watched uh, we had an intern once that was blind and I had him, he looked at the tree, and then we asked him to come report. This was back in New Family Search. Okay. Come report to me on what our problems you found. And he went in there, and he's showing this stuff, and I'm watching him, and he's like navigating faster around the tree than I am, and he's just listening to it. <laughs> so he's just going, bam, 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 and I'm going like, man, how is he doing that? Because it was amazing. It was amazing. So, okay. so, uh, so is this it is ever going to be more compatible, yeah. I guess? I have a proposal. We haven't been able to spend more time on it. I okay. apologize because our desire is that everybody can use Family Tree. Yeah. And if it's not very compatible, it's very hard to, to do this without JAWS knowing it. And the reason why JAWS has trouble Let's see. is Let's when see. JAWS looks at a web page, it's looking for standard type information okay. like a field, a uh, text, things like that. Oh, and it gets okay. confused sometimes if we don't have to, we have to put special labels on data that JAWS understands. Okay. And if, it, if we have some JavaScript, which is basically code that runs on the web page, okay. that can confuse JAWS. Okay. So, so most of this is like technical behind the this scenes. This is technical. Most people don't see it with the naked you eye, don't but even see JAWS it. would see this. JAWS sees it. So okay. the application JAWS sees it. Okay. It's not anything anybody would see on the screen. All right. That makes sense. So what I'm proposing, and they can let me know if this would be a good idea. Okay. So I guess let us know, Petty, and anybody else who right. uses JAWS. So Family Trees has different views. We have the, uh, the landscape. Okay. It's not how you spell landscape, but close. You're missing a D in there. <laughs> it's been a okay. long day. It's okay. I know Thursdays are a hard yeah, day for you. It is. So, so landscape. we have landscape view. We have a couple other views. Okay. What I am proposing is to create a new view. Okay. I don't know what to call it. We probably call it, I don't know. I don't know if we call it JAWS view. Or, or like just, accessibility just, view or something. Yeah, something. That's going to say accessibility. Yeah. <laughs> And what it would do is it would just lay it out in text. Okay. So it would just say Ron, and then it would say it would say on the screen it would look like Ron person Tanner or whatever. Ron Tanner, and and uh, like so we're doing a tree. No, mm -hmm. we're doing a tree. Oh, okay. So then it would say spouse. Gotcha. And children. then have the name children, and it would just lay it out. In, in a very organized fashion. Got it. And then we would just uh, make sure JAWS controls are on this, and you would just go to that view, and this would allow you to click a name and go to that name, and then it would the page of the name would be very simple, things like that. So it would be easily accessible. Easily with accessible JAWS. with JAWS, and okay. we probably would remove some features that aren't necessarily, like, and that make it a little harder for JAWS to jump around. Like we have portraits, we have... Uh, all you know, drop downs and all that kind of stuff. Sure. We'd get rid of all of that, and it'd just be your tree laid out in text form. in text form that you scroll, and okay. then you can like you would scroll down. You see you and your spouse and your children, and you scroll a little further. You'd see your parents and your siblings. You scroll okay. a little further. You'd see your grand grandparents, your grandparents and siblings and your and aunts and uncles. Okay. And then you can click on one of the people, and then you go to that their person record. that their page, and then you can click on view tree and make them the root. Now you'd see them and their spouse and their, their children, children. Okay. and so forth. So that we've actually started working on some of those screens for a different project, but I've I've talked to the engineers about wanting to take that Since approach. Since we're already kind of working, we're already it. doing it. Just mm -hmm. take that approach, make it a view, make sure it has JAWS accessibility on it. So, so I apologize, coming. it's not sooner, but uh, that's what I'm thinking. So let me know. Okay. So let us know if that's something that you're interested in. It could be coming See in the future. Work for you. Maybe not anytime soon. Sorry. No, can't promise a date. Sometime before the millennium. Yeah, it'll be sooner <laughs> than that. Okay. Okay. Um, dis 
Emager. I am sure I'm botching this, guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, the name? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just, um, just say D something or other or whatever. Guys, my reading skills are off today, I guess. Um, on Family Tree, if you are combining duplicates, do you move over a spouse or a child if they are already on the person that is being kept? Yeah. Sometimes they have the same person code, and then sometimes it's a different one. I don't want to mess up the tree, but it's a little confusing. Yeah, though. very good question. So thanks for the question. Let's get down to that. Um, this person, okay. I guess, also, just draw a little bit. while you're drawing, um, this person is also... Let's see. They work as a genealogical librarian for their state society. They often get questions about who to contact at Family Search if they would um, to see if they could be filming collections. They're LDS, so they think that they know everything wrong. <laughs> um, she wants to know who to refer them to. Would that be you? If they want to do what? Um, film. They want in to filming collections. They want to be one who takes pictures, or they want... They want to see filming collections. Well, you can see collections on the site that we have digitized. Okay. Well, well, read the question to me again. So, well, so the person just said, I work as a genealogical librarian for our state society. I often get questions about who can you contact at Family Church Search to see if they would be interested in filming collections. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, interested in coming and having people scan and film, oh. film their collection. Okay, so who would they contact? Oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the person. Go ahead and send me the email with the information. I will forward it to the right person. Okay. When you get back to the office, and then I'll have them contact you. So, so do that. Dia Simminger, send Ron an email. Ron at FamilySearch.org. Ask him that question so that he remembers, because I guarantee you he's not going to remember. <laughs> um, he has a hard time remembering birthdays around here. So... Ask him that, and then um, he'll forward the email on and have them get in contact with you so that you can figure that out. So back to your original question, combining duplicates, do you move over a spouse or a child if they're already on that person? We don't want to mess up the tree because sometimes they have the same code. Sometimes they don't have the same code. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. So merge in very simplistic forms looks like this. Okay. On one side is the survivor. The survivor. And this one's the one that's going to be archived away. And you, you, for those who've done merge, what you do is you pick what you want. You say, bring that one over. You choose which one of these things you want to bring over. Okay. Okay, so in this case, what if the PIDs, the IDs are the same, mm -hmm. they line up right across each other. Okay? So if they line up across and they have the same PIDs, okay. then you don't need to do anything about it. You don't need to... So I would already. just say push merge and it would... Well, you just ignore moving it over. Oh, I would ignore it. Right. Okay. Because it's the same PID, it's the same person same in the person. tree. It doesn't. There's no difference between this one and this one if it's the same PID. Maybe just move information that's missing from one to the other. You can't do it here, so okay. that doesn't work. So ignore them if they have the same PID. Now, this if one... we have different. This one is spouse two. So this one has two spouses. One is the same. This spouse two is different. Okay. They may have the same name... But a different PID. But a different PID. Okay. I'm talking PIDs here. If this is a different PID. Now what do I do? Well, it means that these two are duplicates that need to be merged oh. later. Okay. So I don't necessarily want to merge these two records together. I want to merge these well, first. Yeah, no, well, these are the two you're merging right now. Oh, okay, okay. So name Ron and Ron. Okay. You're mer merging the two wrongs. I'm merging two you wrongs. You can't merge these two spouses here. Right. So so you have to merge this one later. Okay. Well. So what do I do? Sometimes you forget what that PID is, or sometimes you look for duplicates and it doesn't show up. Yeah. So what I recommend doing is move this spouse over. It's okay. So Ron is going to temporarily have yep. two spouses. That's, I have two spouses over here. They may be the same name, but go ahead and move them over here. So now there's two spouses over here. Same onto, here. Onto my survivor. Same, or, same, uh -huh. same with the mother and father. If you've got two parents, two sets of parents, okay. either two mothers or two fathers or two parents, that means they all need to be merged. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily give Ron two sets of parents and two spouses, even though they might have the same name. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah, the only problem is when they do have the same name. If they have different names, then maybe those aren't the parents, or, or maybe they had a step for or right. a second wife, or right. something. So okay. then, after you do this, what happens is when it's done. 
So now I'm all merged up. Ron so, has. So now you're merged, and what you will see names. is you'll see Ron, and then you'll see spouse, spouse one. one and spouse, spouse two. two. Spouse two. You and then you'll see father one, mother one, yeah. and father two, mother two. Right. On his page. Okay. And that might panic you a little bit, but that's okay because you know you're going to. Don't panic. Because now when you look at it, you know the PID of this one and you know the PID of this one. Because they're right there for me. Right. So okay. then you just say, oh, I'm going to merge these two together. You can write down this PID, for instance, click on that person and go to them, and then go to the merge, go to come. Go to possible duplicates, and under possible duplicates, you can enter in this PID number and say merge those two people together, and Good. then merge them. Done. And, and I can only do that here because the PID is written right here, right? The license plates. Right. The right social security number is right underneath. Okay. Since I know it right here, it's easy to find. So okay. I recommend doing that because you're going to go around and merge these back together, and you're going to merge these ones if they're the same. So now you have all the PIDs right there. So I recommend go ahead and moving it over and then going to the person page and then start fixing the spouses and merging them and then fixing the parents and merging them. Okay. Because it's just a nice little shortcut to be able to see the PIDs right there. Not, not, not have to, have worry, to worry about, about, worry about, writing, to worry about writing them all down and, and keeping track of the paper or anything like that. Oh, okay. So I recommend go ahead and moving them over and that's solely because then I can find the PIDs and just go right in and merge in the duplicates without having the hope it shows up in possible duplicates or not. Okay, that sounds fair. Okay. Okay. Here's another one. I am sorry, you, Eugenia. I'm sure I'm butchering these names. I am sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> have boring names, please. Uh, uh, if you have a family member in your tree that has two spouses and you are certain that somewhere down the line someone has wrongly merged these two people with similar names, what is the best way to sort out that situation? Okay. This is actually not super common, but it's fairly, it's common enough that everybody mer runs into it. So let me tell you the problem. So we did an oopsie merge. No, it's not no, that. No, we didn't do an oopsie no. merge. See guys, this is why I don't do family tree. So please, if you see me at a conference with him, please um, don't ask me questions about family search. <laughs> I, I'm only really good at social media. That's all I really am good for, guys. <laughs> all right, let me start off by this. Okay. So what happens is, this is line one, oops, line one, and this is line two. Okay. And these are two people. Okay. Two people or two sets of families, and they're fixed, they're doing their line, and they hit a this ancestor here. And here's another line, and they walk up that line, and they hit this ancestor. This is supposed to be a common ancestor, right? That's known as the common ancestor. Okay. Well, there's occasions when this person is not the father of this line. It means that somewhere, somewhere else, somebody merged two people together that shouldn't have been merged together. Ooh, okay. Okay, so what happens often is people in this line keep wanting to change this person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then this line gets mad, and they go up there, and they keep trying to change this person to look like their person. Right. Like, don't mess with my person, he actually looks like this. Right, and, and the, the clue to know that this is happening is you find things like parents changing. There's two sets of parents. Okay. And they're very different. Uh -huh. Different spouses. Okay. And this person, and different children. So okay. this thing has like a whole bunch of children. Sweet. So we're just playing like a back and forth tug yeah. of war. On and it's not. Answer. And it's not that people are being mean. No. Or that people are trying to be destructive. It's just that their line goes to this guy, and they want this guy to look like their fifth oh, grade fifth grade grandfather. Right. And this one's going up the line, and it wants it to make it look like the fifth grade grandfather. Right? Okay. So the the one thing you have to do here is you got to split that person in two. Okay. Whoa. Now okay. it sounds horrible, but it's not that bad. It sounds terrible. I'm this, not going to lie. This is what you do. Okay, this is what we do. You go in there and you create... I'm going to get a different color. Okay, here, let me get you a, let me get you a green. That's a nice primary color there. Well, no, that's they're complement. They're complement. No, they're not complementary. They're tertiary colors, actually. Okay, so you're going to go create a new person. And you're going to... We'll be done in like two minutes. You're going to hook these children onto this person, right? So that's going down your line. And then you're going to take the right parents and you're going to move them over to that person and you're going to take the proper spouse and you're going to move it over to this person. You're going to make this person correct for your line. Okay? Taking everything from here, 
that belong to you, to belong to this person, you're going to put them on them, and you're going to leave all the other stuff over here. All the, leave all the other stuff that's not about your ancestor over there. Okay. Now, when you make this duplicate, you have to enter the name and all that kind of stuff. The name's probably slightly different. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a John, and the other one's Jonathan, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you split those two. Okay. And so you leave their kids on that one, on that side. You take your kids, put them over here. You leave those spouse and parents over there, and you take the ones that are right for your guy. Okay. And then you put a not a match between these two. Got it. That mean, and so what, no one will try to merge it again. That's right. So it won't show up as duplicates. You put a not a match between these two. I, I can't draw it very well. Got it. What happened is... What you happened? put a not a match between these guys. That's right. The not a match goes between those two people. And that way it won't show up as a possible duplicate. This okay. person won't see this one as a possible duplicate. And this person won't see that one as a docile duplicate. Okay. And they won't merge them. For instance, let me give you an example of one of mine. Okay. Let's see it. I have an a ancestor. This one's named Henry Martin Tanner. Okay. And this one's named Martin Henry Tanner. Because that's not confusing at all. And everybody wants to merge them two together. And they were actually cousins of the same great-grandparents. Their parents must have hated them. Yeah. Well, no, I don't know. I think it was. Uh, <laughs> back then, I don't think they worried so much about naming the kids, the, the grandkids the same. Okay. So anyway, and so I had to make sure they were split apart, and I had to put the not a match in there so they didn't get caught. Okay. Now, if you're a Latter Day Saint, yes. Here's another twist. Give me the give me the. What uh, do you want? Blue. You want blue? Give me the blue? A blue. Here we go. Oh man, we're going. So like if you're a Latter Day Saint, then uh, there are ordinances that belong to this person over here. Okay. <clears throat> now you can't move them. Okay? Right. But you can send a support case to support and say, hey, I just split this person out. I split this PID and made it, uh, this PID 2, I went and created a PID 1. Mm -hmm. <coughs> because these were incorrectly merged and they weren't sitting in the change log. Well, that's another thing I should say. This only happens where you collapse together and you can't get them apart, is if the merge happened before it came to Family Tree. Oh, so it happened earlier in system. New Family Search. Happened in New Family Search. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so if this happened before before Family Tree, and it's not showing, these two aren't showing as combined in the change log, because if mm -hmm. they are, you just uncombine it, and you're mm -hmm. fine. Uh, then split it and call and send up a support case and say, I just took, created this person, P1, to that was similar to P2, because I had to split the line, and I want you to go check the ordinances and see if they belong to my guy over here. P1. And oh, by the way, I think the ordinances on my guy are this date and this temple. If you could do that, they'll find them. And then uh, if there are ones over here, they'll find them and they'll put them over here and leave the ones for the other person there. And okay. then you'll be good. Now, I just realized it may not be this complicated case. The other case may be somebody just keeps putting the spouse on there. And so sometimes they just put the spouse on because they have uh, folklore. You know, their family, their great grandma did uh, genealogy mm -hmm. and she never made a mistake in her life right, and she knows so everything. that's right and so she she said that that was the spouse but that person was never really there so that's another problem and that one you just delete the spouse give a reason why and maybe con maybe contact can. that person and say how or, or contact them before you delete them and say why are you putting the spouse on if they say well that's what it says in my jetcom and you say well you need to have a source for that spouse because i can find no evidence that that person was ever married to that spouse Okay. That's how you deal with that. Okay. okay, I hope that answered your question. Okay. That was a pretty complicated one. Whoa. Actually, that's one of the tough ones. I got a little messy there. <laughs> but it's all doable. It's, you can fix it's it all. all fixable. Okay, Tracy wants to know, can Family Search please create a way for people to search their own tree? Yeah. Sometimes you remember names of people you put in your tree, but you don't remember where they are on their tree. Right now, the only way you can find someone on your own tree is by their FSID, so their PID number. Mm -hmm. But no one has those IDs memorized. I know I have yeah, someone in my tree sure. whose mother's maiden name was O'Hannon, but I don't remember whose mother she was, so I literally have to click from name to name to name to name yeah. to name in my tree to find her. I have hundreds of names in my tree. If I enter O'Hannon in the finder search, it's going to search all a family search, so I'm going to get hundreds of names. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well. So. All right. I just want to search. She just wants a search bar that's in her own tree. Yeah, I know that. Uh, your own line, I'll say. Yes. 
Yeah, because it's all one, we're all the same tree. Right, we're all part of this big giant family tree, yeah, but right. she wants one in her own. No, I get it. I understand. You're working up your tree, and you're following these lines, and you know you're up someplace, and this is the person you want, and it comes back with a thousand of that name because that name happens to be common across all 1.1 billion people in the tree. So you get all that big list. A lot of Jane Doe's out there. Well, we really couldn't do this because we didn't have the capability of uh, of knowing what's in your line very quickly, okay. right? If we were trying to analyze someone's line in family family tree, we had to we had to walk the tree and look at each node, and you wouldn't be very happy because it would take a while for us to search for it. So it, did, it doesn't work very well. Okay. However, recently. People may have realized that we released a, uh, a new feature. This looks like a weird part of the tree. I guess they're kids going to the same place. I don't know. It okay. kind of looks like a weird praying mantis. Yeah. Weird Does it look person. that bad? Okay. No, okay. I, was, it's okay. I was going that direction. Okay. So you released a new feature. i got to learn to draw different ways yeah. now. you got to learn. Okay. So there's the tree. Okay. So we recently released a feature, if you'd noticed, that you can go to an ancestor mm -hmm. and you can click view my relationship. And when you say, view my relationship, we quickly, within less than a second, we draw your relationship to that ancestor. Okay? Okay, and give me a direct path to her. Yeah, so it would be a direct path. It could be a spouse and up, you know, like that. It gives you a path from you to that okay. person. Okay. Well, what that's, how we do that is we have built a system, and it's just barely been released. That's, that's when we started doing this was the first Thing we use that system for okay to show how you're related and it goes 15 up 15 people up and 15 down okay so like you're maybe sitting over here and it, it'll also show you how it goes down to that person okay right? so you can see from you up to common up to that person okay so it goes 15 up 15 down so what I am uh, talking when I am investigating with the engineers is why can't we do a search that says, find me Ohana or whatever it was, Ohanan, mm -hmm. and we would do a search of all 1.1 billion, get back all the PIDs, and then go and look and say, are, is there any of those PIDs on that search results, are they any of these PIDs in your tree up 15 and down 15? Mm. Okay. And we, we should be able to do that super fast. So then, when we get a hit, we find you Ohanan, or if it's a last name, Ohanans, you have multiple of them. Then we'll just filter out the search and only show the ones that were 15 up or 15 down from you. Ah. And that should be pretty good. I mean, 15 up is getting you into, you know, 1400s or 16 to 1400s, depending how young you are. <laughs> okay. I say how young because, you know, wow. more generations. Okay, so I get, I understand the issue. You're not the only person that's been asking for that. I understand exactly why you want it. Uh, another thing you could do in the short term is if you uh, have a particular ancestor you're, you're working on, or or you may want to come back, you know, and somebody you're going to visit so, several times over the next few days or mm -hmm. whatever. What I recommend doing is I recommend setting a bookmark, a browser bookmark. Okay. So sit on the person page. And while you're sitting on the person page, just go up to the top of the URL and make a bookmark. So here's the URL, and it'll have blah, 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 blah. And here's the person, Ron, with my birth date and stuff. And usually over here, there's a star or some other feature on your you're talking about PC? browser. On your browser. On your browser. So like on Chrome, Safari, I know. Safari. It's up on the Chrome. top. It's one so of the drop downs. It says Safari's on the com. It says Berkman. On, on Chrome. It's a little star over on the right. Mm -hmm. And you just click it, and what it'll do is it'll save it as a bookmark in your browser. Right. And then if you want to go back to that person, you just go to the bookmarks, and it'll list it here, and you just pick it, and you're right back to Ron's personal page. Right. It's like putting a little tab on your page for you. Yeah. So that's, a, that's an alternative. If you know you're going to work on that person for a while, what I do is I just create three or four bookmarks for the different people I'm working on, and then I can just jump to them anytime I want Okay, so that's like a, maybe a short-term fix until this happens. Yeah, so I, we're investigating it. I understand that you want. I, we haven't started working on it or anything, but it's just an investigating I have in my head, and I want to talk to engineers about it now that we have that relationship finder. 
Okay. All right. Give me another one. What are we doing on time? We're doing. We're doing okay. We started, we started late. late. We started late, so we're gonna go. So we got about further. like five more minutes. All right. Okay. So Amy Archibald wants to know. What are the plans for legacy beneficiary? Time frame expectations? Someone who can access temple reservation, user messages, living persons on an account for a family member who passes away. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we, what did she call it? Legacy something? Legacy beneficiary. Ah, uh, well, that's interesting. That's a good, that's a good term. Yeah, it is. I usually call it the, um, bequeath. So yeah. you bequeath to somebody. Okay. So we've talked about it. We haven't done anything about it yet, but we have talked about uh, bequeathing. And what she's asking for those out there that uh, didn't get all the question is inside of, if you remember, there's living. Here's the living. And then out here is all the dead that are in the family tree. And the stuff in living is only seen by the person who owns the account. Right. So if I own the account... My personal record would be hidden in the living. That's right. And then what she's asking is, if I pass away, what happens to my records? Right. And it's not just the living here. It's also all the living you put in. Right. And it's so like also... My children, my spouse, that's right. my memories, my records. Right. Well, and your memories sit up here in memories. But they're not where the people can see them. They are, but right. they're hard to find. Okay. All memories are publicly viewable. Ah. The problem is, is you have to know the special URL to get to it. Oh, gotcha. And you don't. Usually people find memories by going to a person and it has a little picture of them and you click on it and it takes you over to memories and sees the picture. But I can't click on a person that's living. Okay, but so... But you can't click on that if they're dead and you can't, so you can't see inside of here, so you can't click on one of those living pictures to see the living thing. Okay, so I'm a living person, I've passed away, but my record is still over here in the living section. Right, so there's two cases. One is, if you're a member of the LDS church... If you die, we, we know it because the clerk goes and marks your membership record dead. Right. When he does, we're going to take your person here and we're going to make them dead over here. But all of your living around is still sitting over here in this place. And all the memories hooked to those people are still sitting here in this place. Right? Okay. So uh, we have two things that, one, we've got plans for and working on. Okay. The other one is the bequeathing thing that I talked about. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about having a bequeath, having this living person say, when I die, I'd like to bequeath my living information to this person in the family tree. Okay. And then when, when you die, either membership clerk or somebody provides definitive uh, information that this person's dead if they're mm -hmm. not a member, mm -hmm. like a death certificate or something that's valid. Okay. Then, uh, then we would grant access to the, person's to the beneficiary account. The bequeather, the one who got bequeathed. I don't know what that is. It's beneficiary. The beneficiary. It's so, the beneficiary. Uh, so we would grant the beneficiary access to this okay. space. They won't log in as that person. Oh, okay. They'll but just be I'll able, able to, to go and see everything inside of that. So, it, so for this instance, it would be like, for example, if you passed away right. and you were not a member, and I, I went to the church and I took a copy of your death certificate and I said, look, my dad actually did And I did said die. that you can, you and would he, be my bequeather. Yeah, he and you would be as my the beneficiary. beneficiary. And I said, look, he actually died. Here's a death certificate. And then they'll grant me access to what he has put in the living space. That's right. So that I can see it and either move it over into the dead space. Well, or if they're dead or move them into your living space. Or move it space. into my living space. Right, stuff like that. Or just know where all the memories are. Now that's one solution. That's the okay. beneficiary thing. Now another thing. Is that the thing that you are working on currently? No, that's that the thing not. that I that when she asked beneficiary, that's what I thought of. Okay. But the other thing is we're also talking about shared. And I've talked about this in my Roots Tech presentation. Yes, shared living family trees. So shared living, mm -hmm. which means that here's person one's private area, mm -hmm. and then here's. Person two's private area. Mm -hmm. You know, these are family members. These could be husband, wife, brother, and sister, d distant brothers, distant cousins, doesn't matter. Current child. Now, with sharing living, you would be able to go and let me make that a little smaller. You could go and create a family place, and then this person could put their stuff in here, along with the memories and all that kind of stuff. And this person can augment that with their stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you all work out of this place here. And you all see each other's living. 
Okay. So, so it doesn't matter if they when die. When a person passes, their information would still stay in the family. That's right. It doesn't space. disappear from here. Mm -hmm. So if this is the person two here and he has his spouse, he there would be a person two over here. And if he you know doesn't use this and he goes to use this one, then everything here will be about him. So when they're gone, this one doesn't matter if it sits there. Okay. Because it's their all information there. is still in the family. Plus all the memories and all that kind of stuff. So right. that's another way that it that we so that that's we something that this we're is something about. that we're starting to work on. Okay. okay. Again, no time frame. Sorry, Amy. Yeah, we it's don't have coming. a date, but it's it's we're working on it, so it's not going to be like forever. <laughs> okay, she had one more question. Okay. Do you want this one to be your yeah, last we'll do one? Yeah, this will have to be the last one. Then we've gone over our thirty minutes. And guys, then we'll... sorry. So we're going to do this as the last one, and then we'll set up a time to do questions next week. And if we didn't get to your question today. We'll roll them into the yeah, we'll just next one week, the next one on the and list. yours will be the first ones we answer next week. All so, right. Amy has one last one. She's our final for the week. So, she asks, names shared with the temple system appear stuck. I know that currently ordinances are pulled only for each patron's temple district. Are there plans for a FIFO process that would cover <laughs> more temples, not just the patron's <laughs> temple? I have friends that are in small districts that are mostly self-sufficient, and they are struggling to help help in getting their family temple work completed as their names appear to have not have any movement on the ordinances in over four years. Actually, in some temple districts, it's well over five, and in some de other temple districts, it's like a long time. A long time. A long time. Ooh. So anyway, let me, let, me, let me explain what she's talking about to those who may not understand. Okay. So, so give us the English version. Right, yeah, I'll give you the... <laughs> the layman's terms. What a, what a strong last question to end on, huh? Yeah, yeah. What a <laughs> nice, simple, easy one to do. Well, we only go for the hard stuff around here. Okay, so I'm going to say here's two temple districts, okay? okay. And people, uh, members live in particular districts. Okay. And, you know, members know what district they're in. Mm -hmm. And the way that inventory, which is information sent to the temple, that when you go to the temple and you just take a name off the desk, that's the te that's coming from this uh, temple file, which is called temple file. Okay. And the way the temple file gets filled is people share with the temple. So you go on your reservation list, you share with the temple. When you do, it gets put into this pot for, that represents this district, district one. And here's another pot, district two. And so if you're a member of this district, temple district, when you share, yours gets put in there. The ones you share get put in this pile. Okay. Okay? And then we take... Then my district, or what I put into the pot gets shared with my temple. That's correct. So okay. that when the temple needs ordinance, it takes it out of that pot. And shares it with the people. And in, uses the it in the people in the temple. Okay. Same with this one. If you're in this district and uh, and the temple, their this temple needs it, then it takes it from that pot. Okay. So, so now I've gone and done all this research and I have all these amazing family names and I want them to be No, done, what it's right? doing, what she's saying is I share, My people have names. shared a bunch of temple information to the temple yeah. and it takes forever to get done in the temple. Right. Well, the reason for that is if you happen to have a temple district that has a lot of family history happening and they're, they're doing it, then what happens is this gets really full. And nobody pulls from Well, we only pull at a certain rate. It has to do with how many people attend the temple. Right. Now, but if you're in a district that hardly anybody does family history and share with the temple, then this one is not very full. So what happens is people in this temple district, since there's not very many of them doing family history, then their names get done real fast. And in this temple district, where there's lots of people doing family history and share all sharing with the temple, then these there's so many names in the pot that it takes forever to get done over here. So that's one problem. The other is just, you know, the number of people going to the temple. So there, so one is sharing, two is I find names and I, instead of sharing them to the pot, I actually take them with me. Well, that's different. If you take it with you, then you're going straight to the temple with it. I'm skipping you know, the pot altogether. That's right. We're only talking about ones that are shared with the temple. Okay. That's the only ones we're talking okay. about. Okay. All right. So Nancy's asking, well, what are you going to do to stop this log jam right here? That's yep. what she's talking How about. How do we get the log jam in the Yeah. Okay. So, uh, interesting you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> I have been working on a proposal uh, that I've been asked to go and present next week to, uh, to begin the process of potential of, uh, approval. 
So all I'm going to say is uh, that I understand the problem. I think that uh, it should be true. And she says fivefold, so that means first in, first out, which means if you're if you have the oldest name, it should be the first name taken by the temple. But oh, oh, I gotta tell you one other thing that just makes this really interestingly worse. I don't know if this is a good thing to tell you because you'll probably get mad. So here's another <laughs> temple. Okay. And it has names here. Okay. And let's say this temple is uh, only this temple's for Japanese names. Let's just say. But this is for Japanese names. A temple it only takes Japanese names to go here. Okay. Because so a temple, a, a name that doesn't have, that's only Japanese can't go to an English speaking temple. Right. So let's say that you're over here in another in another district, mm -hmm. and you have Japanese ancestry, Ooh. and you share it with so the temple. So my Japanese names have to go to this Japanese. Then the ja temple. your Japanese names have to go over here, and you're not in the district. So that you're in district two, but this is district one. Someone gets shoved to the bottom. Yours, yeah. These all, ha all the district ones have to be done before they start doing somebody else's. So I for sure am at the very, 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 very bottom of the pot. And not only that, if anybody shares names over here from district one, they get in front of you. That's really rude. And so that's what she's frustrated about. Okay, so. So my proposal is to fix this. Log jam. Yeah, what I'm I can't tell you more about the Can't tell you more about it because it's, I got to make sure it's approved before I say anything, but. The intent is to try to fix this log jam, even it out, so that the oldest ones that have been sitting around for a long time get done. But remember, if it, if that just, even if we fix it so that the first, oldest one goes first, doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be done any faster. Mm. Because remember, it has to do with the number of people that go to the temple. Right. And uh, oftentimes when people uh, talk about this, they say, well, women... They get done pretty quickly, and it's usually a couple of years, but men take forever. Well, why is that? Because there's less men going to the temple than there are women. And so you need to get your brother into the temple. And, and drag them by their eyeballs. That's right. And, and you know, yeah. someone even mentioned to me the other day that says, how are my ones that share the temple ever going to be done if everybody's now bringing their own cards because they're being converted to family history? And I said, good question. I have, I have an answer for that one too, but I can't <laughs> share it with you now. Uh, but I'm also looking at that. How do we take care of a case where uh, people who are doing family history are taking their own names and people who can't take names because they're elderly or some reason they can't get to the temple and they, so they share, how can we make sure that those that are sharing still get done in a reasonable time? Mm. And I've been thinking about it for a, uh, for quite some time mm. and I've, I've got my proposal together and had it reviewed and it looks like it will solve these problems and uh, we'll, I'm just going to go present it and it'll probably take some time uh, when you're messing with uh, the temple things you can expect that it has to be reviewed by lots of people some and very high up people very high up people and be approved mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see so, so not very satisfactory to but be continued yeah, I can't, it uh, is yeah. in the process it's something he's working on unaware of so yeah. don't feel like you're being left alone he knows it's coming yeah um i yeah. think that's it I, that's where we're going to end today guys we do have some other questions so we will set up a time for next week to do another Q &A. We will. thank you very um, much for coming and we thank appreciate you. you guys asking these questions it's so fun to like get to know you guys a little bit better and what you guys are asking it helps i know it helps him know what to plan for the future he right. thinks about these it's crazy we were talking about a family search the other day and family tree and I don't know if you guys realize this, but Ron plans a family tree changes five years in advance, guys. Yeah. Five years in advance. So all these features, all these cool things that you're seeing come out this year, he thought about in 2012. Yeah. So these things that you're talking about, these things that you're helping us with, they really help the future of family tree. They so do. we appreciate you asking your questions and bringing your comments because they do help him find ways to help it grow and expand it. So yeah, I want it to work and I want it to work well. And I want people to be happy with it. Yeah. And we definitely want everybody to know. So please, like if you haven't already shared, share a little bit. Um, yeah. Let us know if these things or these questions, this session is still going, still give us feedback on how this is going, whether yeah. the video was okay. Do you and, love the Q and A's? Do you yeah. think they're stupid? The, get it's rid fine. of the whiteboard. You know I mean? You just <laughs> tell me what you think. Do we need more jokes? Like yeah. what do we need? I don't yeah, know. I'm usually mostly jovial. I'm I trying know. to be very, uh, we're informative like, i know like one of the comments today said that you're so funny and educational we didn't do maybe we should start I'm off just, with a joke i'm just i'm just a funny guy 
I just come funny. Well, you're kind of funny looking. But, okay. <laughs> All right. So Thank you very have much. A good night, have guys. a good night. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you next Bye. week. Bye-bye. See ya.